Hi, I'm Carl Dixon with VeradaDrums.com, here for a short lesson on the Kaheteru, the main samba rhythm for the tamborim used in the samba schools in Rio. This is uh, one of the most challenging basic rhythms for any of the instruments used in the bateria, uh, but it only is really based on, on one small pattern. So once you get that, then you can do pretty much anything else you want to do on the tamborim. The stick you hold just like any other stick. Uh, try to keep the thumb and the forefinger across from, from each other and not make a, too much of a fist, um, but don't hold it out too much in the, in the ends of the fingers or you'll like, lose a grip on it. So the more, if you have it uh, more in your hand, you won't have to squeeze the stick so hard so you can stay much more relaxed and that's really good. The grip on the drum, can either be held uh, with all four fingers in the side of the drum or with one finger on the outside or two on the outside. Some people even hold it with one. Um, but a, a couple of things that are, will be helpful. One is to keep the drum basically aligned with your arm. So if you're the face of the drum and your arm should basically be in a line, not out here and not out here. And then also not out here like a like a flag, straight up and down. That makes it much more easy to rotate the drum, which is a really important part of this rhythm. Both hands are going to use this rotation movement from the elbow, so not so much of the wrist moving like this, like you would with other sticks or hand drums, uh, but really mostly rotating from the elbow. This hand with the stick is going to rotate here without moving the elbow up and down very much and without moving the wrist up and down much, just moving here. And then this hand holding the drum is gonna rotate also from the elbow, not, not moving the drum in big motions and not waving the drum around with the wrist, but just rotating here. So if you can kind of uh, get used to this rotation feeling with both hands, then when we position the stick and the drum, both hands will be using this motion. With a stick, you want a, an angle between your arm and the, and the stick here, not straight, but with an angle here. And then keeping your hand basically in the center of your body and pointing the, stri the stick straight away from you. Uh, just go straight up and down in, in a line. Again, not, not bending the elbow a lot and not bending the wrist a lot, but rotating here from, from the elbow straight up and down, uh, pointing straight out from you. The drum, I think, is much easier to maneuver if it's held up close, close to your shoulder and your face, which makes it loud, but helps keep the weight hanging off of your shoulder. If you hold it out to the side or out in front of you, then you're supporting the weight of the drum and your arm all the time, which makes it more difficult to do the rotation. When you hold it closer to you, either down at your side or then just relaxing the shoulder but keeping the drum close to you, then the weight sits on your shoulder and this rotation becomes much less effort. So again, this right hand with the stick is rotating here from the elbow, staying close to the body, pointing the stick straight up and down. The left hand holding the drum uh, is about shoulder or face level and is also rotating here from the shoulder, from the elbow, and staying very relaxed. The two basic sounds then uh, are, are one, the regular downstroke like any other drum, and then also playing the drum with an upstroke. And it's only because we use these two sounds that we're able to play with one stick the same fast rhythms that normally require two sticks or a hand and a stick. So this requires turning the drum. And we're going to turn with this rotation stroke. Uh, so the, the first thing we can start with uh, is just an, a downstroke and an upstroke. And as we play the downstroke, 
the drum is going to turn facing down and then when the upstroke comes up the drum flips around again as the stick comes up so remember the stick is going here in a straight line and the drum is positioned right in front of it uh, so as the stick passes through the drum it turns out of the way Uh, this is kind of like a, a, a turn style that you might walk through, right? You're, the stick is going in a continuous path, basically, uh, and the, the drum just turns as the stick contacts it. Uh, so the stick doesn't take like a, a roundabout way to get around the drum. The stick passes through the drum, turning it as it goes through. As we do this, we want the ends of the sticks, the points of the stick, to hit the drum right in the center. Uh, I think this is a, a good place to start. We can modify that later if we want more volume, but for the, to get the most consistent rhythm and tone, getting the stick to hit in the same spot in the drum for, for all of the strokes is really important. Uh, and again, it helps you get more sound with less effort. So for now, just getting the ends of the stick to hit in the in the center not not flat here yet uh, but right in the center so at both for the downstroke and for the upstroke we should start off trying to get the same sound by hitting in the same place on the drum So, these are exercises number one and two, slow and then faster. Number two. And as I do these slow, I'm really making the movements kind of large just to exaggerate the, the path of the movement of the stick. Uh, that helps me kind of see which direction it's actually going and helps get the timing of the stick and the turning of the drum to work together better. As I get faster, that's going to get a little bit smaller, but it's always helpful to start off with a very large exaggerated motion when you're working on, on something that you're eventually going to speed up and make smaller. Exercise number three then is, and number four, are the, the downstroke and the upstroke paired together in a, in a quicker rhythm. So number three. Just down up, down up, down up. Again, I want the same sound from the down and the upstroke, and I can help get that by hitting the ends of the stick right in the center for both strokes. And also by hitting each stroke from the about the same distance away. So if I'm, if I'm playing with a big motion on top for the downstroke, then I should open up and play with the same distance from the stick to the drum uh, past the drum below as that when I come up for the upstroke. Number four is the same thing, but now up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, once I have both those two pairs, down up and up down together, then I can start making some different combinations of three. So uh, number five is down, down, up. So uh, with this combination, remember the turn is only going to happen on the stroke that is before an upstroke. So the first down stroke that I play doesn't turn. So on the first one, on the second one, I, it turns as I play through the drum. 
Then on the third one, it comes back up. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, Number six is, again, three strokes, but in a different order. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. So again, on the, the down stroke that comes before the following up stroke is the one that's going to turn. So I am running, here I'm going to start. One, one, two, three. Up, down, down. Again, number five, down, down, up. Number six. Two different groups of three notes. Next up is groups of four notes, which are going to be the those three with the groups of three with another one added on the beginning of the end so number seven down down up down and again i'm i'm not turning on the first one i'm turning on the second one down down with a turn up turn back and then down and stay down down up down Then Then number eight has the same four notes, but in a different order. Down, up, down, down. So in this group, I do turn on the first stroke. Down with a turn, up, turn back, and then two normal strokes. Down, down. Down, up, down, down. Again, number seven, down, down, up, down. And number eight, down, up, down, down. Next, I can do five in a row which takes me from one beat to the next beat. One, two, three, four, five. Down, down with a turn, up, down, down. One, two, three, four, five.
So really slow, it's still very big, so I can see the direction that the stick is moving. And as I get a little bit faster, I can make that a little bit smaller so that I can keep up with the tempo. So this is basically one beat at a time of the kaheteru, this main rhythm for the tamborim in samba. And once I get one of them down, then the trick to building up uh, your fluidity to play this rhythm continuously is just getting more and more beats uh, all at once in a row with this, with this rhythm. So if we start with one, that can help link all those five motions together. But then uh, that's number nine, exercise nine. Number 10 uh, is one beat at a time, one beat at a time, and then three beats in a row of the kajeteru. Right, so when I'm just doing one beat at a time, in number nine, the turn is always on the second one, right? Turns on the second one, turns back on the third note, and then four, five, come here. When I'm doing three beats in a row, like in number 10, the turn is still always on the second note of every beat. So if the beat is here, turn is is not on the beat it's always on the second one of every beat one more time number 10 number 11 is another way to to sort of think of these four notes for every beat but broken up into two pairs the, the two strong notes, both down strokes, and then the other pair of down up, right? So one and two and one and two and one and two and one. The two down strokes and go together kind of physically and dynamically and then the pair of down up uh, also kind of fits together rhythmically and, and physically too, right? So if I play the rhythm like that with the space, I can kind of hear these two together and then these two together. These two big ones with the right hand and then the two where the left hand turns and turns back. If I take the rhythm with a big space like that and then gradually just make the space less and less between the two pairs, then they all kind of slide together in a continuous way, which is what we want to end up with, right? Another way to build up the kajeteru is starting from this skeleton or outline of the two downstrokes with the right hand and then one beat by beat filling in the other two notes, the other pair, the pair of down up, right? So starting with this rhythm, number 12.
and then one beat at a time, adding in the other pair, the down up. So here is number 13. So on the first beat, I'm filling in the, a whole beat of the kaheteru, one, two, three, four, five, and then continuing just, just the right hand without the two notes that come with a turn. So number 14 then is the similar thing, but two beats in a row of the kaheteru. And number 15, same thing, but with four beats. These last three exercises are also a great way to build speed with the kaheteru. The slow practice is great for getting the positioning and the timing and good sounds and the coordination. But once you have that at a slow tempo, eventually to get good at playing this rhythm fast, you need to practice it fast because a few things change and a little bit when you play them faster. So to, to let your hands kind of figure that out, you just need to, to play some fast. Now the hard thing about playing this rhythm fast for a long time continuously is that it's easy to get lost in the middle of it and to get the coordination of this hand to uh, link up with this hand all the time. So one good way to practice anything fast is to take just a small chunk of it at a time. And these last three rhythms help you keep the tempo with this outline rhythm, the skeleton, And then one beat at a time, or two beats at a time, or four beats at a time, add in a, a little burst of the kajiteru, and then come out of it, but stay in the, in the rhythm instead of just stopping. Okay, so here's kind of winding in and out of those three variations at a quicker speed. So you can keep this hand going all the time and then just add in one or two or as many as you want of the other pair, right? The, the down up pair. This is also a great thing to do when you're playing with a group and can't quite keep up for a long period at a time. This is a, a, a way to build towards that. So you're, it's likely that you can play one beat at a time faster than you can play 300 beats at a time for for a minute or so and once you get one then you can start working on two in a row and once you get two in a row you can start working on four in a row all the while you're still contributing the, the strong notes of the rhythm and playing in time which is better than than just playing a couple beats and stopping um, so this is something the when all other tambourines in your group are, are playing continuously, you can blend in that with that and contribute to that by playing all of these notes and then mixing in the full kajiteru as much as you can as you go along. Starting with uh, smaller, shorter lengths of it, one just one or two beats and then four, or as many other, as many beats as you can in a row.
A couple more important things about the kahiteru rhythm. The swing of this rhythm should be the same as the swing in the kaisha and hepiki and shokayu. Right? This is the swing is comes from two parts. The the balance of the volume of each note and the rhythmic placement of those notes. And with the kahiteru, the getting the volume and the balance of the different of each of the four notes is the key to helping get the right rhythm of those notes too. So of the four notes in every beat, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The first one should be the strongest. That's the note that the surdus play together on. That's the note that the hepikis and shukai accent as well. Um, the second strongest note should be the last one, the fourth one, the one that comes right before the next beat. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Then the second and third one are, are less and can be about the same. So to get that, the most important thing is that I play a little bit stronger from with a stick further away on the first one and the fourth one. Those are the two where the drum doesn't turn. Right, so if I go real slow, one, two, three, four, one. The first one is the strongest, second one is less, third one is less, fourth one is a little bit stronger, leading back to the first one again. One, two, three, four, And just like every other drum, if you move, hit the drum with the stick further away from the drum, it's going to be a little bit louder. So you can use that as a way, a way to, to gauge the volume of each stroke. The further away it is when it starts to move into the drum, the louder it's going to be. So the first one should be the furthest away. Then the second and third one should stay closer to the drum. The fourth one should lift up a little bit more. And then the first one of the next beat is the furthest away. It's really hard to do that and play with different volumes and keep the rhythm exactly even. What tends to happen is the rhythm shifts around a little bit to accommodate for moving a greater distance. And that's actually what we want to get the right rhythmic phrasing of this rhythm, uh, which is similar to when we play uh, with a shokayu or ganza and some of the kaisha rhythms and hepiki is rhythms as well. So. If we just focus on the, the dynamic level, how loud each of the four notes are, that's the, the first step to getting the right rhythmic phrasing of the kahiteru. And as it gets faster, it might get a little bit smaller, but that relationship should still hold the same. So far we've been doing everything with the tips on the stick, not with the stick flat. I think this is a good uh, to get a good sound from the drum at first and to get a, a better, more accurate response from the stick. Um, but when you're playing uh, very, very loud with a big group or outdoors and want to get more sound, you can do that really easily, not by playing harder uh, and working more, but just by adjusting the angle that the stick hits the drum. So instead of hitting just with the tips, if I move the drum and the stick together a little bit so that the stick hits the drum flat, 
Then instead of this sound, I'll get this sound, which is so much louder. Same exact amount of effort, but much more volume. Um, so that's as simple as, as just adjusting this, this angle right in here from hitting with the ends of the stick to flat. So here is, is one sound. And then I move this together and I get this sound. This is the reason why you often use this flexible plastic stick uh, to play this rhythm in a large group because uh, when you get the stick flat, it makes so much more sound. Um, but uh, one last practice tip is to spend some time with a, with a wood stick. Um, because this also gives you a, a different sound and sort of requires that you be more consistent with the beating spot on the drum and staying really relaxed with the stick to get a good bounce and avoid pressing into the drum with the stick. So if you can be hold the wood stick really relaxed and play through some of these things slow, then when you move to the flexible plastic stick, you're gonna be set up with a good technique. The thing about the plastic stick is that it, if you're kind of pushing on the drum a little bit and getting some of these sounds and also getting this sort of scraping sound with the, with the tips against the drum, you can sort of get away with that with the flexible stick. You can't get away with that with the wood stick. So practicing with the wood stick can help kind of uh, test your, your technique and make sure you're getting uh, good response from the stick on all those strokes, down and up. I hope that was helpful, and I hope you learned some things to help get started or improve your playing. Let me know if you have questions in the comments. Keep in touch, and let me know if you're interested in more. I'm working on a uh, more complete course on all aspects of playing tamburim in Bateria and, and Asama School. Uh, let me know in the comments or, or contact me if you have other questions about this rhythm or the, the handout uh, available, or if you're interested in lessons online. And you can check out uh, lots of tamburims and sticks and more Brazilian instruments at veradadrums.com. Thanks.